Hello! So, I thought today I would do something a little different. I haven't actually gone out of my way to make anything new for the channel just yet, but I thought I would make a little bit of a tutorial video for Dawn of Fire specifically, since apparently gatekeeping information on it and not elaborating on how mods for this game works seems to be running around a lot. Now, I will try my best to be as clear and concise when it comes to stuff like this, but I obviously do not know everything about it. Um, still, anyway, I've been working on this project for about a year now, and I started modifying Dawn of Fire back in, I would say, either October or November. Um, but with that being said, I will try my best to be able to describe everything that I do know. So, um, first of all, what you'll want to do is if whenever you want to modify the game now, I personally use the iOS version of the game. Now for Android, it might be a little different whenever you're doing that. So just bear that in mind. I haven't worked with Android, uh, the Android version before. So if you want to uh, do it, it might be a little different or it might be the same. I don't know. I'm not doing additional research on that specifically, but I'm sure if you were to look into the game's files whenever it's an installed on an Android device, you'll find very similar things. Now, and since this this is a uh, Unity game. Now, here is Unity Asset Bundle Extractor Avalonia. Now, basically, the Unity Asset Bundle Extractor itself is very well known uh, in terms of allowing people to modify Unity games specifically in that kind of community. But Unity Asset Bundle Extractor Avalonia is basically a rewritten version of the old one, which allows for a lot more modification and also uh, gives you better access to certain files in the game. Now, um, I currently have it open already, uh, but I basically just clicked on the exe file that's right here. And this is what you want uh, right here. This is basically the main uh, window for Unity Asset Bundle Extractor. Actually, I'll reopen it since having it small is better. Um, but whenever you open this up, it might be a little confusing. There's a lot going on here. Uh, now there's export, export all, rename all, a bunch of this other stuff. And then there's a bunch of options and everything. But what you want to look for is the file right here. Now, um, I already have a bunch of these, uh, like I, I've been working on getting the game modified to be able to suit my needs to, for this channel, to be able to upload things for people. But I thought I would describe what the thought process is and also to just show people how to modify this game since it seems like it's a, it's lost opportunity for people in this community to learn more about how this game works and I thought I would be the one to be able to describe that to people. Now, uh, with that being said, this is uh, basically the Dawn of Fire folder that I have. Now, all of this is extracted from um, Dawn of Fire on my iPad specifically. I, I have a jailbroken iPad so I'm able to access the file system and everything on it. But um now let me real quick find where the okay so the file that the folder that you want to go into is called unity cache um you'll want to find that now i would just take it the easy way out and just try searching for the folder that's called unity cache so that's c-a-c-h-e unity cache uh, and it's all one thing. It's not no spaces or anything. I might have like a little graphic or something uh, showing up on where you need to go. But um, whenever you click on that folder and then you go to shared inside of that folder, um, all of these folders that are inside of this Unica uh, Unity Cache shared folder are essential for modifying this game. Everything that's in here can be modified in a certain way if you know what you're doing. But with that being said, <laughs> that's a huge caveat, if you know what you're doing. And there are a lot of things in here that can be easily broken if you don't know what you're doing. But there are some very easy ways uh, in modifying this game that I know of anyway. There's a lot more that I don't know. 
but basically this is what's inside of that unity cache shared folder everything that's in here is identical to what you should see um but instead i have some extra things in here uh just from like extracting stuff but the prefabs folder that's right here this is basically a folder that contains here i'll, I'll open it up um now since i have two of these types of random serial numbers that are in here um now these are randomly generated each time that the game updates uh so whenever the game updates a new one of these is generated um now whenever it is generated a new data now ignore this data old this is basically just a pre-modified version of the data uh file i'll go over all of that later um, but this uh, data folder and this info fo uh, the folder uh, data file and this info file right here basically are compressed versions of all the assets the game needs to use to be able to display properly. Now, um, now, whenever the game gets an update, it changes these. There are some changes that are made to the specific files that are inside of this folder that need to be changed so whenever it's changed then they make a new folder and then there you go now um this is the most recent version that uh of this that i have now all of this is extracted from the game from the ipad so if the game were to update again i'd have to extract everything from the ipad again now with that being said you can still technically use an old data uh file from a previous update of the game however some textures will be broken obviously since old textures and the models and everything will be broken since it won't have anything to grab uh, from the file and sometimes the game may even crash if you don't but I've done it before where you you just use an old uh, version which you basically whenever you do something like that you just rename both of these folders to each other uh, so you swap them but with that being said um, this right here is the compressed data file, which is what you want. Um, now, all of these folders that are in here contain the data file um, and it, all of them, all of them do. Um, now, not necessarily, they, there's also a chance they might not even be updated uh, from update to update, but all of them have this data file that's right here and that is necessary for modifying the game. Um, but I'm going to go into here real quick, uh, prefabs, and then go into here. Um, so this data file that's right here, you want to open that up using Unity Asset Bundle Extractor Avalonia, which is what I have right here. Double click on it. And then it's going to say this bundle is compressed, decompressed to file or to memory. And you can choose either or, but I love using file for this because then you have a physical uncompressed data file, which works great in my opinion. Um, now I'm going to create a separate folder here that is basically just going to be data um, changed. I'm, I already have a folder in here that's called data modified. So I'm just gonna do that. This is just for this explanation anyway. Um, and then whatever you want to name this file, that's fine. Uh, but eventually, whenever you uh, either modify it or you'll you'll see in a sh you'll see very shortly. Um, but basically, it doesn't matter too too much on what you name this uncompressed data file. But I like signifying that it is uncompressed. Uh, uncompressed. There you go. Uh, and then press then basically press save or press enter, which is what I just did. And all these CAB files that are right here, or CAB files that are right here, these are, it's kind of hard to describe what they are. Um, think of them as basically zip files, but for, uh, they were encrypted prior to uncompressing the data file. It's kind of hard to describe it uh, in any way other than that. But this one right here that has zero file extension on it, so the res and the resource one, ignore both of those. Those are not necessary for anything that we're doing. Um, but this one that has zero file extension on it, that's what you want. That's basically uh, the, basically this is the one that you want to focus on. Whatever we're, I'll, I'll show you everything that you need to know about it in a second, but Whenever you're exporting these from the data file, press export all. 
Um, now, exporting from these is necessary to be able to modify the game, so you'll want to do that. So export all, um, and then I'm going to export it into the same folder that the data uh, data changed is in. So select folder, and now all of them should be exported into that folder. Um, now you want to open it. Um, so these three files, these cap files should look familiar since they were inside of that uh, data folder and now they're inside of this, not data folder, data file and now they're in here. Um, now this one, this main one that's right here, you wanna double click on it. And would you look at that? All of the assets and everything that make up Donifier are not necessarily going to be in the same data file. So you might, we need to go through the game files to figure out where everything is. Um, but this prefabs one has a lot, I'll say that. Okay, so um, whenever you take a look at it, all of the uh, names of the individual assets in here are here. Um, there's different types too, uh, which I usually like filtering uh, by the specific type since it gives you a better idea of where everything is. But um, these are all animation clips, animate, uh, animator things, uh, animation controllers, audio clips, avatars, box colliders, uh, game objects, meshes. Um, now, I'll basically give you my two cents on what I know about each of these. Um, so game object, or sorry, uh, animation clips, don't know, uh, animator, don't know, animation controller, don't know. Uh, audio clips are basically just audio files that are encrypted into this full, uh, not this folder, but this uh, file that we're currently looking into. Um, you can extract them pretty easily, actually, if you wanted to. Um, there's a plugins uh, tab right here that you can just export the audio file directly. Um, I won't necessarily need to show that off, uh, but it basically just allows you to export whatever audio files are in here. Uh, that Dawnfire uses. Um, audio source, I don't know. Um, box collider, avatar, don't know about those either. Uh, game objects, they're basically just objects that exist in the game, uh, if that was obvious. <laughs> it, it, it's basically, it, yeah, that, that's, that's about it. It's just naming them. Uh, there might be a few extra things with that too. Um, now, meshes are, uh, and materials. Materials are basically, um, types of things that go on top of other objects in the game that's a very primitive and not explainative version like I, I i don't know exactly how to describe it other than that um then there's the meshes which basically are the polygonal 3d objects that are in the game that textures and materials adhere to um if you delete these then they are gone completely so they they basically erase everything it, it, these are fun to mess around with sometimes but i'm not too sure on actually how to uh modify them just yet um now i know i think if you go into um it, edit data and then a vertex count. So this is basically how many, think about how many polygons something uses. Um, that's a weird way of putting it, but basically uh, vertexes are triangles, uh, or I believe so anyway, something like that. And how many triangles something makes up, then that's basically how many vertexes it will have. <sighs> this is a lot to explain and I apologize. This is probably gonna be a long video, but um, yep, that's that's that. Wow, crazy. Uh, mono behavior, not sure on what that is. Uh, particle system, don't know what that is. Sprite renderer, don't know what that is. Texture 2D. This is basically like it, the regular textures that are in the game. Uh, flat 2D textures that are put on uh, meshes, for example, or like other things like that. Um, so for example, I actually, no, I don't have that anymore. Um, so let's say I want to get the sky uh, texture for Zodiac is basically the name of the celestial island in this game. Um, so we'll basically go over here to plugins, then we'll go to export texture right here, press OK, um, and then we'll just export it directly to that data changed folder right here. And then we'll go back into um, 
here's here's this again data changed now here's uh the png file that it just exported and would you look at that that's right here so this is basically what that texture looks like that's the sky texture for um the celestial island and um and then you can also modify it if you want to um so if you want to go to edit textures right here um and then press load texture and then whatever png file that you have that is the same resolution as this texture that was just exported so for example if you wanted to edit this texture you would do it in 1024 by 1024 as it says right there um then whenever you press open um and then it loads in and then you press save then now that texture will be modified to whatever you changed it to just now so that's a pretty uh that's pretty much all i know other than uh i guess this game is kind of difficult to modify other uh, all things considered but I just thought I'd make a little video explaining on how to mod, uh, like how to mod Dawn of Fire and everything. Um, now let's say I just made that texture change and I want to save it. Uh, press save as, and this cab file is now the modified version. So I'm going to make another folder that says cab modified. And then go into that and then there you go. Save it into there. Um, now what I'm going to do here real fast, um, is I'm going to copy all three of these, not this one right here. This is the, still the unmodified cab file, unless if you decided to press this save instead of save as, then it overwrites that one. Um, which I don't really recommend since then you'll have to go through a bunch of other stuff. Um, so this is the modified cab file right here press, uh, and then basically copy all three of these back into this folder that's right here and then what you want to do uh, you can close out of that once that's saved and then press open open this uh, uncompressed data file that's right here um, now all three of these are basically what they were prior to getting modified and everything so ignore them um, and then you want to press import and then import this one specifically that is up here uh, this is the uh, modified cab that we just made. Uh, is this asset serialized? I just say yes for any time that we're doing that. Um, and then press, so basically it'll have a little star over it whenever it's been modified. Uh, and then you'll want to press save. And now all of them are saved into this data uncompressed file that's right here. Um, and then you'll want to press close since otherwise it'll complain about you already having the uh, data file open. You'll press open. And then you'll want to open the uncompressed file again and then press compress and then once you do that then underscore underscore data and then press lz4 which is usually what i use and now you've got yourself a compressed data file that then can be transported back into here uh, if you want to do it that way or this data file specifically will work if you just replace it inside of the uh, game files itself that's on your device that you have currently running Dawn of Fire on and whenever you replace that data file then anything that you've modified inside of the game will then work. All right, well, that's about it uh, for modifying uh, Dawn of Fire. If you have any further questions or concerns, I will make an additional video showing how to do other things inside of this game. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that I don't know, especially uh, like modifying like, oh, skyboxes or anything like that. I don't know. But yeah, just... I thought I'd make this video for you guys since it's been a while since I made a like a tutorial kind of video for this. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys are all having a good day and I'll see you later.